Hello and welcome to another Top 10 Auto Show. Each week we give a panel of experts a sector of the motor industry and they produce our Top 10s. And this week we're in the field of luxury cars. Yes, I feel right at home here. You? Why yes. In the world we celebs occupy, it's vitally important to give the right impression. Ah, so that would be why you turned up for work today in a Reliant Robin wearing a Christmas sweater. Jimmy, Jimmy, you have to move with the times. Right now it's cool to be uncool. Mmm, that would explain most of those boy bands then. There you go. And without further ado, let's dip our toes into the deep pile carpets and leather clad luxury that is this week's Top 10. There are no bad cars in this top 10, so it's hard to say any one of them deserves to be 10th in a list. Rules are rules though, and our panel's number 10 is the Jaguar XJ8 Saloon. Every aspiring rep dreams of one day driving a Jag Saloon, and the XJ8 is the ultimate expression of Jaguar's sporting intent and luxury. These are luxury cars for the driver. Rear space is somewhat cramped for the class, a reflection on the dated platform the big Jags ride on. Up front, however, is an environment for the sporting executive, a sports saloon in the old style. Acres of wood and leather inside may hark back to a golden age of sporting saloons, but under the bonnet lies a V8 which is bang up to date. In 3.2 and 4-litre guises, the sound and performance generated suits the Jaguar's personality well. The ride and handling follows Jaguar's formidable formula of comfort and pace. Not only capable of coping with the v 8 power, this car positively encourages you to enjoy yourself. Although better than in times past, you do not buy the XJ8 because build quality is as good as a Mercedes S-Class. The Jaguar offers a much more personal experience. Wood and leather give the British car more soul. Yet there can be no denying that it has less interior room than most of the rivals here and is therefore starting to look its age. All the above marking it down to a lowly tenth slot. Number nine is another Brit, the Range Rover. Not as well built as the Jaguar, it creeps ahead by offering a unique driving environment amongst this top ten. Here is a luxury car which can take you across rutted moorland tracks or through snowdrifts or floods. And these days, that's all worth bearing in mind. True. A few years ago, the Range Rover looked like an indulgence for the country set. With global warming bringing ever more extreme weather conditions, it may prove to be the only viable car in our top ten over large tracts of the country during wintertime. Inside, you get the leather cockpit expected in this area of the market. Yet there's also rather a lot of plastic too, which does seem out of place somehow. As you would expect though, the driving position is commanding as you ride along on air suspension. This is clever stuff. The Range Rover will lower itself graciously on its air springs to allow easier access. Stray too far into the unpleasant off-roady stuff and the car jacks itself up for you without having to resort to having surfs dig you out. Pulling the finest of 4x4s along is a BMW straight 6 diesel or the ageing Rover V8 in the 4.6 litre format. There is loads of low down lugging power with either but the old V8 struggles to keep up with newcomers like the BMW X5. All is not lost though, for soon we shall see an all new Range Rover complete with BMW's V12 engine. For now, old age relegates the current Rangey to a humbling ninth place. In this sector, the badge means everything. This is why you'd never take a luxury car from Deu seriously, would you? Well, imagine creating a whole new brand from nothing in order to take on the big European players. Then have the audacity to build it in Japan and you end up with the forerunner of this, the LS420 from Lexus. 
The LS400, which launched the Lexus division of Toyota, rocked the motoring world. Here was build quality to match the best from Germany. Similar levels of luxury and an engine you could not hear at Tickover, and you have a recipe for success. In the badge snob society of Europe, the impact was not so severe, but in the United States, which is the biggest market for luxury cars, they're more interested in what they get than who makes it. There, the impressive equipment levels, combined with an incredibly low price, drew many customers away from the likes of Mercedes. The hardest job for Lexus after having made this huge impact was to be replacing that impressive car. And the result is this, the LS420. The steering is absolutely pin sharp. You can place this car to an inch and the traction with the big fat tyres is really extremely good. I suppose the biggest disappointment is that Lexus didn't take into account the main criticism of the original LS400, that of lack of personality in the styling. As you can see, there's little to get excited about, and few will be offended either. Which has to be the point. Lexus had such a huge success on their hands, they felt it prudent to stick with a winning formula. That means just as much leather packed around, even more gadgets. A slightly bigger V8 engine, which is just as quiet. And a price which still hurts the big boys. Yet it still has a few years to go before the Lexus badge means as much to us as Jaguar, Mercedes, even Audi. Hence, a disappointing eighth place for a car so accomplished. Number seven is from The Establishment. The BMW 7 Series has enjoyed a starring role in a James Bond film and takes the fight straight to the Mercedes door. Yet, however, it still feels like the pretender to the crown. BMW must be wondering quite what they have to do here. Their 3 and 5 Series models are established as class leaders, yet the 7 has never quite hit that high spot. In size, it's right there with the best of them. In engines, even the lowliest six-cylinder model has a classic power plant in its own right. The interior has all the leather and the gizmos you could ever ask for. And that BMW badge isn't a handicap either. You join me in the uh, pampered world of the luxury car. As you can see, we've got uh, all of the usual things you'd expect. Lots of leather, lots of wood, dashboard full of high technology. So, let's get to the basics. BMW are a sporting brand. Every model they produce has a sporting slant on whatever it's asked to do. Yet, in the luxury arena, the executives want to luxuriate in the back, not be thrown around down a twisted country road. Of course, the 7 Series can pamper like the best of them, especially in the V12 guys, yet the mental image is there. Just as with Jaguar, BMs are seen as sporting saloons, rather than the ultimate expression of luxury. On the road, the 7 Series has the air of a cross-continental executive about it. If you need to rush from Stuttgart to Berlin quickly in the maximum comfort, this is the car to do it in. The ride may not be quite as cosseting as some rivals here, but if you need to press on, this car remains composed. As we said earlier, there are no bad cars here, but the 7 Series fails to dominate its class the way other BMW products do. Twenty years ago, you would not have put money on this, but our number six is an Audi, the A8. Swallowed up by the Volkswagen Group in the 70s, it seemed for a while that the Audi name was struggling for an identity. Then in 1980 came the Quattro, the pursuit of technology, and the rest is history. Taking on the mantle within VW as the technically advanced luxury brand, Audi needed a worthy flagship. This, the A8, fits the bill beautifully and has recently gained a new W12 engine to crown its other achievements. Although outwardly it may look well designed but pretty conventional, it is bristling with innovations. The bodywork is aluminium resting on an aluminium space frame. It boasts four-wheel drive as well as a W12 engine in the range topper. The other engines aren't bad either. A V8 in either 3.6 or 4.2 litre or the V6 from the A6. There's an impressive diesel option too. 
It's no lighter than most rivals thanks to all the kit installed, but it is the aluminium which makes sure that there is no weight penalty for the four-wheel drive. So as far as performance is concerned, then this car is more than impressive. Throw in the added glamour and security of the four-wheel drive, and there is a recipe for success. Relatively speaking though, this is a low volume product, a showcase for what Audi can do, a role it plays with aplomb, a serious rival to the Mercedes S-Class though. Here Audi have a similar problem to BMW and Lexus. Whereas Mercedes have been associated with luxury for as long as there have been cars, the likes of Audi have made a relatively recent push for those dizzy heights. No matter how good the cars may be, and they are, the punters out there will always have a mental impression that the Merc is that little bit better. And number five is the all-conquering hero from Mercedes, the S-Class. Is it really the best amongst its contemporaries, though? Well, let's look at the gizmos. The Audi and Lexus both run it close on this score with a fistful of innovations between them. Then you look at the Mercedes toys. For example, there's the Distronic system. Using a radar unit in the grille area and the car's cruise control, the S-Class can make sure you never stray too close to the car in front, even in fog so long as the system's switched on. Engines then. Anything BMW can do. The range is topped by a V12 and starts with an impressively smooth V6. Luxury is on par with the majority, even if it falls short of the Jaguar's gentleman's club atmosphere. Build quality has always been a Mercedes stronghold. Here the Audi matches it. Yet Mercedes knows ahead because their long-term after-sales service runs to the likes of, for instance, being able to replace a seat cover for a 25-year-old car. All you need is the chassis number and it gets dispatched from Germany the same day. I know what you're thinking. If the Mercedes is so good, why is it as low as number five? Well, the truth is that the S-Class is probably the best-built car in the world. Precision engineering combines with attention to detail second to none. But it has no soul. Inside there are acres of plastic, the best quality plastic you'll ever see, and mixed in with plenty of leather, but it doesn't make you smile like the Jaguar. It is the best built mass production line car in the world, with the best build quality, and arguably the best reliability, although Lexus may argue with that one. But, and this is a big but, absolute luxury is handmade. Join us in part two to find out what our top four luxury cars are on the panel of experts list. Welcome back to the top 10 luxury cars. So far we've looked at the best luxury cars from the mass producers. Now we're heading into the realms of the hand-built luxury carriage and a strange paradox. Our number four is the Aston Martin V8. Not only is this model luxurious, but the brand carries overtones of James Bond that even BMW haven't managed despite appearing in more films. Like the sophisticated A8, the Aston has an aluminium body, only this time it's meticulously hand-beaten by craftsmen. The interior also is handcrafted with more leather, wood and aluminium on display than in a more clinical mass production design. The 5.3-litre V8 engines carry a plaque bearing the name of the man that made it. Often, owners buying an Aston to replace their previous Aston would insist on the same man to build the power plant for them. It's detailing such as this which makes the Aston Martin V8 model special. We're talking serious luxury here, with a sporting heritage still strongly remembered at the factory, culminating in the Le Mans and World Championship wins in 1959. If we're honest, the ride and handling of a 7 Series BM is more rounded than the Aston, yet it matters little in this rarefied field of hand-built supercars. The BMW has its potential top speed limited to 155 miles per hour. The Vantage version of this monster will comfortably top 180. Not many owners will want to come close. Such antics are too vulgar. They just know.
Think of the ultimate rich man's toy, the ultimate statement of luxury. And what do you come up with? Why a Rolls Royce, of course. And our number three is their latest saloon, the Silver Seraph. Launched nearly three years ago, the Seraph met with a little initial resistance from the owners. Out went the old 6.7 litre V8 to be replaced by a 5.4 litre V12 from BMW. The engine out front barely whispers as it launches two tonnes of machinery forward. All this bodywork is supported by a sophisticated air suspension system. It may not handle as well as the efficient Mercedes S-Class, but that's not the point. All that weight has another eerie effect too. Bumps and potholes are ironed out from beneath you as though they never existed. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the point of a Rolls-Royce. If there was controversy over the power unit used, that was to be nothing to the events that followed shortly after the new saloon hit the showrooms. Then owners Vickers decided to sell off Rolls-Royce and Bentley. BMW bought the name for a whopping sum, leaving VW with the cars but no right to stick the badge on them. A compromise was drawn out. BMW got Rolls-Royce and VW got Bentley as well as the crew factory. of the rich there really are only two choices for the ultimate luxury car Rolls-Royce and Bentley therefore our number two is the Bentley version of the new saloon the Arnage only we insist it must be the red label version for one of the first things Volkswagen did after taking over was to reinstall the old turbocharged V8 in place of the twin turbo BMW V8 from the green label model confused you will be while Volkswagen will continue building the Rolls-Royce saloons for BMW as part of the deal, that shouldn't get in the way of a little sibling rivalry. VW listened to the cry for British engines and brought back the huge V8 from the previous generation model, with enough torque to pull an ocean liner. Quite apt, don't you think? It is a weird feeling sitting inside a car which feels similar to a train in terms of mass, and then suddenly throws you back into the seat like a lightweight sports car. Unsettling at first, it soon becomes addictive. If the Rolls Saloon is the chosen vehicle of the chauffeur-driven rich, the Bentley boys like to drive. There seem to be more Bentley boys out there too, because the sporting model outsells its cousin by quite a margin. For that reason alone, it rises above the Rolls Royce in our top ten. In reality, the differences inside merely reflect the different personalities of the two marks. Bentley are shortly to re-enter the fray at Le Mans. In future years they hope to re-establish the racing heritage gained back in the 1920s when the original Bentley boys beat all comers. Before we find out what is the most luxurious luxury car there is, let's look back over the top ten so far. At 10, the Gentleman's Club interior and charm of the Jaguar XJ8 are not enough to stop it looking its age now. Number 9 is another Brit, rising above the opposition, literally. The Range Rover is due for replacement soon. Number eight replaces the upstart from Japan, which shook the aristocracy from Europe from their slumber, the Lexus LS420. Number seven is the seven, that is the seven series from BMW. Number six is a true sophisticate from Germany, boasting an advanced aluminium construction as well as four-wheel drive and an LW12 engine, the Audi A8 will be long remembered for its achievements. Number five is the benchmark for mass production cars. The Mercedes outsells all the opposition in this top ten worldwide, yet feels too clinical to rule as the ultimate luxury car on the planet. Number four is a real dinosaur, a hand-built car, reflecting the pride of the craftsmen who build it. Maybe sometimes progress loses a little more than we realise in the pursuit of perfection. 
The same could be said of our number three if you listen to the traditionalists. That would do the Rolls-Royce Silver Seraph an injustice. The engines may be from a more modern era, but there can be no denying its superiority to the model it replaces. Unless you mix the best of both worlds and create our number two, the Bentley Red Label. Reviving the old V8 was a masterstroke, creating a future classic. A car that will be remembered in history for several reasons. It's the last new Rolls-Royce model to be produced at the Crew factory, and the last to use the old V8 engine. It also revives a classic name, the Corniche. The name itself reflects the right kind of image. Some might argue that Volkswagen is cynically cashing in on the name and the opportunity before BMW take control of Rolls-Royce in 2003. But the world would have been a poorer place without it. Sitting inside in shoes really isn't the dumb thing. Much better to let your feet sink into the wool below. The seats massage you, while the aromatherapy you can only get from Connolly leather complements the effect. The men and women who produce the leather upholstery can trace their trade back to the stagecoaches. The beautiful wood which graces the cabin uses the same techniques as cabinet makers in the days of Chippendale. It may not be politically correct, but we should be proud that the only place this combination of beauty and craft could be made is Great Britain. Make sure you join us next week for our top 10 unusual cars.